today I'm going to show you how to make a hearty Japanese pumpkin soup. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So smack that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out. Breakfast in Japan has always been about rice and miso soup. So even though Western style breakfasts have been gaining in popularity here, they almost always involve a bowl of soup. Today I want to show you how to make a popular autumn soup called kabocha potage. It's rich and velvety smooth, and it's often served alongside a salad and toast for breakfast here. Let's take a peek at our ingredients. For our vegetables, I'm going to be using about three tablespoons of butter, one small onion, one carrot, and about 700 grams of kabocha squash. For the soup, I'm going to be using five cups of vegetable broth, some high butterfat cream, and some parsley for garnish. Let's start by preparing the veggies. I've got our onion here and I'm gonna trim off the top and the bottom before cutting it in half and peeling it. I've got a whole video about my technique for chopping onions, but basically I cut a few slits into both sides of the onion before cutting slits in it from the top to the bottom. Then I just mince it up. You want the pieces to be fairly small and uniform, but this doesn't need to be perfect since it's going to get pureed. For the carrot, I've already peeled it, so I'm going to start by trimming the ends off. Then I'm going to cut it into quarters lengthwise and chop it up. These not only add a great vegetal flavor to the soup, they're also going to shift the color from an anemic yellow to a vibrant orange. For the kabocha, the seeds are held in by a column of pith running down the center of the pumpkin. So I like to separate this with a knife to make it easier to scoop the seeds out. Then you should be able to go in with a spoon and scoop out the seeds like this. Now we need to peel the skin. I've tried a few methods of doing this, including using a vegetable peeler, but the skin is pretty tough and thick and I've found the easiest method is to use a knife like this. You want to peel it thick enough so that there's no green part remaining. Otherwise your soup's gonna end up a dingy brown color. But you also don't want to go too deep or you're gonna lose a lot of kabocha. Also, you want to be very careful to make sure the pumpkin is stable and that you're pointing the knife away from your hand and body. Once you've got it all peeled, you can cut it up into segments and slice the segments up. I like to slice these fairly thinly so they cook through quickly. By the way, if you can't find kabocha where you live, you can use any sweet starchy squash like butternut or acorn. Finally, I'm going to mince up some flat leaf parsley from the garden to use as a garnish. You can use any herb you like here and pumpkin seeds or croutons also make a nice garnish. I'm gonna start the soup by melting the butter in a large pot. Then I'm gonna add the carrots and onions and saute them until they're just starting to turn brown. You don't have to stir them all the time, but you do want to move them around periodically so they cook through evenly. This took me about five minutes. Next, I'm gonna add the kabocha and we're going to continue sautéing this for another two to three minutes. Getting some good Maillard browning on the vegetables is the key to a flavorful soup that's brimming with umami. So take your time here. That's looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and go in with the vegetable stock. Give that a stir. And then we're going to cover this with a lid. Let's turn down the heat to maintain a gentle simmer. And we're going to cook this until the kabocha is nice and tender. This will take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, so let's open up the lid and see how it's doing. 
as you can see, the kabocha falls apart when I press on it with the spatula, so it's good to go. Now you just want to turn off the heat and let the soup cool down a bit. If you're in a rush, this step isn't necessary, but if you blend hot soup, you need to hold the lid down firmly with a towel or the sudden release of steam is going to cause the lid to blow off. Okay, this should be cool enough, so let's get this over to the counter and load the blender up. If your blender isn't large enough to hold all of the soup, just do it in batches. I'm doing this without a lid so you can see what's going on in the blender, but this is a good way to turn your ceiling into an orange Jackson Pollock painting, so don't do what I'm doing. Okay, that's looking nice and smooth, so I'm going to transfer this into a clean pot and blend up the rest of the soup. To finish off the kabocha soup, I'm going to return the pot to the stove and heat it up. I like adding some cream at this point, which not only adds a bit of richness to the soup, it also mellows out the green taste of the pumpkin while bringing out its sweetness. I'm also going to season this with some salt. The amount of salt you need to add depends on the amount of salt in your vegetable stock. Mine was already pretty well seasoned, so I just added a pinch, but you may need to add a bit more if you're using low sodium stock. Okay, let's give this a taste. Mmm. It's so smooth, creamy, sweet, and savory. I wish I could send you a spoonful to taste. Once the soup is pureed, it'll have a tendency to burn to the bottom of the pot, so you'll need to make sure you stir it constantly. That's looking nice and hot, so let's get this into a bowl. Just look at how smooth and creamy that is. I'm going to garnish this with another drizzle of cream, and then I'm going to sprinkle on some parsley. There are a few things that I find more comforting than a bowl of warm soup on a chilly autumn day, and this golden elixir tastes like a distillation of the best parts of the season. I kept things simple here to highlight the flavor of the kabocha, but this soup is delicious with a dusting of pumpkin spice, or with some cubes of chicken or tofu for a little more substance. It also freezes well, so you can easily make a big batch and freeze single portions so you can enjoy the soup all winter long. Whether you have it for breakfast with toast or as a first course for dinner, this kabocha soup is the perfect way to take the chill off a cold day, so I hope you'll give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, let me know you want to see more like it by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing this with all the soup lovers in your life. This video was brought to you by my amazing patrons who give a few bucks each month to help support these videos. If you're learning something new from my recipes, I hope you'll consider clicking the link up here to join the No Recipes crew and help support our future videos. Well, I'm gonna go toast some shokupan and do breakfast for lunch, but I'll catch you in the next one.